Welcome to Untying Knots, Minds and Souls Untethered with Perry Clark. This program looks at mental health from unique perspectives and shows you how to manage your life by finding the knots that help you and stay away from the ones that could be a disadvantage. Now, here is your host, Perry Clark. Hello all, welcome back to Untying Knots, Minds and Souls Untethered. I'm Perry Clark, licensed marriage and family therapist here with you and I want to remind you to seek out a therapist that, that is professional in your area because this podcast is not for education or sorry, it is for educational purposes and and entertainment purposes, but not a substitute for mental health. So then this is probably also going to be a short one, too, for you guys, folks, because we're I'm back here with doctors. Mercedes Samudio, who you've come, probably come to recognize that we're going to spend some time here doing some therapy blurting out. Uh, and let me just give you the synopsis on Dr. Samudio. He is a licensed clinical social worker and best-selling author and international speaker and visionary entrepreneur who runs their patented, uh, or should say patented, uh, revolutionary Parental identification development model and incorporates shame proof parenting philosophies into her their practices to help parents deal with shame and so that that's not being carried in to their relationships with their children. So we're just going to give that synopsis short one because this is probably going to be a short uh, podcast because we're here to talk about something that recently came out in the last week or so, which is part of the Spider Verse, and that was a short called The Hero Within with Miles Morales. Welcome to the show, Mercedes. And thank let's you, get into you. our favorite web crawler. Yeah, no, um, I was really excited actually when I saw this because I think as someone who consistently uses comics and kind of the characters in those stories in my work, Mm -hmm. uh, it was amazing to actually see someone take that and put it within this amazingly animated and award-winning series that people are already tapped into. I thought that was a great idea to say, how do we help people understand mental health within a reality that, like I said, is already critically acclaimed and people are already. Mm -hmm. So I loved being able to watch this and digest just what they were doing with this film. Mm -hmm. Now, this particular film, which was put out by Sony and their Lens program, was also done in conjunction with uh, uh, and is focused on mental health. And you have the hero within and there was another group that was the Live Foundation, I believe it was. Kevin Love, I think. Kevin Foundation. Love Foundation. Yep. Mm -hmm. In support, support of that or that, which is focusing on one of the things that I know we've touched on in some of our past talks about the spider verse and especially is a subject matter that not just with miles, but I would say is a something we could look very closely at any also Japanese and manga storylines mm -hmm. as well. The idea of sending children into battle and fighting and what does that mean? And what does that result in for them? the choices they're making that are much bigger and often they are probably ready to deal with and then expected as we saw in the montage with miles uh to still get his homework done to still get straight a's to still uh take out the garbage which might be the most one mundane and most wonderful thing he could do yeah and and I remember as I was watching it, there were times when I appreciated this smaller focus on what it means to really be Spider-Man for Miles. I think Spider-Man is one of those comics that often resonates because he's a teenager and mm -hmm. he's living that dual life. And I think many teenagers resonate with that, that they have the home life where they're supposed to be a certain way. And if there's any cultural stuff, right, then they have to uphold that. But then when they're at school, there's a whole other life for them, mm -hmm. right? And so for Miles being Spider-Man, there's family, there's school, and then there's Spider-Man. <laughs> so mm -hmm. Like whatever he's doing as Spider-Man. And so in the main films, we often see Spider-Man do exactly what he starts off doing in this film, which is I'm okay, everything's fine, I'll keep it together, I'll I'll, I'll handle it. And I think in both of the Miles Morales films, that's exactly what you see him doing, right? Even mm -hmm. in the second, he has to meet his parents for a teacher conference and gets pulled into a whole, you know, thing with the spot where he's late, mm -hmm. right? And this is something that's happening to the version of spider-man that's currently popular and so seeing this film pause 
to say what happens to this young man when he's actually at home and he has to sit with all of that, his homework. Mm-hmm. And his dad's very active in his life, but also is kind of sometimes overbearing and always wants to hang out. And he's like, mm-hmm. man, I got to do, you know, I can't always hang out. And so I love that, the visual about what does it feel like to be in this young man's head? What does it feel like to be in this space that he's constantly in trying to juggle all of these mm-hmm. different responsibilities he has? Mm-hmm. And most especially, especially that balancing of that relationship with his dad and the standpoint, his dad wants to be there with him. He wants to have the relationship with him. Of course, there's that struggles there. But the fact that this was a point where he was prepared to spend time with his son. Yeah. Yeah. And even that one point where he asks him, you know, son, are you okay? Because, you know, he's kind of being a teenager. And it's mm-hmm. and says, yeah, I'm okay. You know, even that, watching that weight that a lot of kids do that a lot of times too, because kids see that their parents are there and their parents want to be there and they're doing their best. But how do I tell my dad that I'm going through all of this? And he can't even tell him the biggest piece of him, which is that he's Spider-Man, right? So mm-hmm. the biggest thing that he's dealing with, the thing that probably causes him a lot more strife and hardship, he can't really talk about mm-hmm. right and so he has to combine it to well i'm okay yeah i'll get through it right mm-hmm. that I think it speaks volumes about how teenagers and i think people in general often hold on to those big things right we have spider-man level issues in our lives that we're constantly contending with but when someone says are you okay we often say yeah Right. And so I love that this, the, this movie shows that when he goes into his room after he's told his dad he's fine He's not. Nope. Right. You get to see the visualization of what that not being fine looks like. Which, especially because of the spider abilities, is a fan, which was also one of the jokes that came out when the, first, when the second movie came out, uh, or first, I think it was, uh, was the aspect of his spider sense triggers, even though there's nothing there. But. What is his spider sense? Oh, man, I love that you said that because I think his spider sense, and this is me geeking out, right? I think it's connected to his nervous system, right? Oh, it is definitely. Yeah. Right. Right. And so every time he's in fight or flight, that's that's the spider sense to me. The spider sense to me has always been fight, flight, freeze, fawn, faint. Like it's it's that. Mm -hmm. So when his body goes into something's about to attack me, he freaks out. Here, what was attacking him? Something was attacking him, right? His spider sense was going off because his nervous system was overwhelmed it was Mm -hmm. frazzled and so for me being a therapist trying to help people understand what what is that spidey sense i'm always feeling i love Mm -hmm. the visualize it's his internal nervous system it's him it's if that's what's attacking him right that's what his spider sense is kind of freaking out about that he is actually in fight or flight like he actually is in that space right well the principle of the hyper vigilance which again and if then we both have studied brain spotting and that awareness of what's going on with the body system and the sensory system. The sensory system is always on. It's always taking in information, not just what we see, what we hear, well, also what we hear. Uh, unless we're specifically eating, we're not getting taste, but we're definitely getting smell. There's everything yeah. the skin is bringing in. There's also which in reality is another sense, our proprioceptive aspect of knowing where we are in space and having balance. It's not a sense that we often talk about, but it's also there. And that's all data that is still coming in and going through the nervous system, which brings in that standpoint of how does Spider-Man always know how, either Spider-Man always know how to duck. It's because their system is always on, scanning on, on, on those other levels, to recognize when Rhino is about to come up or when Rhino has thrown something at you, even if they're not immediately looking at it. Yeah. And I think that's such a good metaphor for our nervous system, that our nervous system is always on, even when we're not paying attention. And so like, if like my husband's not home right now, but if he walks in the door, my spidey sense will go off. <laughs> Who's coming in the house right now, right? Because mm-hmm. my nervous system is on. And I think being a superhero his is not always on. It's always turned on to hypervigilance. It's always mm-hmm. turned on to awareness. It's always turned on to, you know, danger. Mm-hmm. And so when you realize that you're having a mental health kind of concern, that actually is a danger. It's kind of a, like you said, we study, you know, brain spotting in the brain. That's a danger signal. Your brain immediately says something's wrong. 
something mm-hmm. going on in, in our environment. And I think for someone like Miles Morales, who's always thinking it's an external thing that's going on, it's Rhino, or you know, it's one of the villains, for it to be this internal space was a really good exploration, right? That it wasn't this external thing attacking me. It was my own kind of internal self that mm-hmm. kind of stirring up, right? Mm-hmm. Stuff into- exactly. And what does that mean at uh, what which when watching the making of the uh, the director of this, I'm blanking on his name at the moment, basically said he was talking about anxiety mm-hmm. and he's had anxiety. He, how does it affect his life? How does it affect everyone? Because everybody has anxiety. It's are we working with it as opposed to working against it? Because it's there, as I like to put it, it's there to keep us alive. Yes, yes. And I love that it was kind of done like in a very horror way, because I think that's sometimes how anxiety feels to us. Sometimes it feels like it's mm-hmm. this thing in the back, right? This dark thing that's coming after us. And so to think about how do we work with it? How do we get to know it? How do we connect with it? I think it's something that is really interesting here, because what Miles does immediately is when he sees it, he sees it as a threat. He starts going into full Spider-Man. I'm going to mm-hmm. punch it. I'm going to electrocute it. right? And so mm-hmm. he kind of immediately starts against this threat because to him this sinister force that he can see right this this wonderful externalized anxiety Mm -hmm. is kind of seen as initially right he sees it as Mm -hmm. something that he has to defeat if you Mm -hmm. will Mm -hmm. and which i think a lot of people feel that way yeah which is also the realization too is that he was also asleep too and how does then again the mind try to process this data and it ends up creating in this form of this nightmare id or a nightmare ego. And the yeah, game is going it. off because I know you're saying yes. <laughs> yeah. And like I, I said yes because what I love is that this nightmare scenario, and, and this is me going into the metaphor, it turns into a spider at one mm-hmm. point, I think. Right. Mm-hmm. So think it about for him, to be asleep, thinking that this thing is after him. He's trying to fight it, and then all this. So it turns into a spider. Well, he's Spider-Man and he was bitten mm-hmm. by a spider. And so I love that it becomes this idea that his anxiety turns into the thing that he is, right? That maybe I'm anxious because I've got this other identity, right? If we think about how dreams and these subconscious mm-hmm. kind of uh, images come in. And so as I watch him not just battle the bigger spider that it turns into, but then it turns into those small ones that are all over him and he can't get it off of him. To me, Which those is are all another metaphors way. of... Look, yeah. Which is another way that anxiety might feel to somebody like there's things falling all over them. Right. Right. And so it's like, I can't, I can't get it off of me. I can't fight it. Right. You think about, like I said, he tried to fight it, then it overpowered mm-hmm. him. Right. And so I think for me, what I love here is the visual of how this can be so overwhelming. It can start off as something that you think you understand and you think you can fight, but then it kind of metastasizes and grows into something that, like you said, feels like it's crawling all over you, feels like you can't get away from. And so I love that Miles doesn't initially just punch it and defeat it. It's something that almost overpowers him. Mm. Right, because he can't defeat the anxiety, right? Mm-hmm. Well, he can't defeat it with the idea of that physical force or theoretical physical force. And, and right. that's something that a lot of, I think, and a greater messages about our society think that you can always overpower these things by force. Yes. And I'm going to be frank, during the pandemic, that was one of the biggest things that people struggled with, I think, on a very deep level, is you can't punch a virus. Nope. You can't scream at it. You can't intimidate it. Yes. You could intimidate and scream at actual people, but you can't do it to a virus. And that disempowerment created its own form of it created anxiety. That no one knew was struggling to deal with. And that becomes an aspect of who are you talking to? And are you actually talking about the anxiety? And do you even know that Mm. is the anxiety? Again, that's why I love that he goes through this whole visual kind of thing with it because he didn't know it was anxiety at first. It came to him as this kind of entity that he might have to fight. And so to Mm. go through that whole dream and then to wake up from it and realize, oh man, I need support. 
And that part helped made me so happy too that he realized, okay, that was maybe just a dream that I just had, but it was overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And it brought him to this realization that maybe I need to talk to someone. And so from initially telling his dad that he was good to then coming mm-hmm. and saying, hey, and I have a lot of things on my mind. I like to talk. I love that whole seven minutes because it teaches us mm-hmm. that even when we don't always know, sometimes it's okay just to kind of throw it out there and let someone else support us with it. Mm-hmm. Which then also, which is also the beauty of the dad and supporting it. But also I think too, for those who are supporting your loved one with ang- your anxiety, it's not necessarily about you trying to fix anything. Despite, yeah, because despite what's going on, Miles is going to be able to talk openly with his dad about the school, the girl, which we know is Spider Gwen. Yeah. Um, but of course, he can't go into the aspects of what it means for him to be Spider Man. Right. And I think to me, again, going back to the work that I do with parents and families, there's always that aspect where we might not always know every aspect of our kids' lives or, you know, our, our loved one's lives. But I think knowing that there's someone I can talk to some of this stuff about, mm-hmm. you know, maybe, yeah, I can't tell my dad about, you know, some of this stuff, but I can talk to him about, you know, girls and homework and school because I know he understands those things. And I think even that subtlety there shows us that our parents they don't have to be there for everything, right? Um, mm-hmm. If you've been able to see the Spider-Man movies, he actually does have a group of spider friends that he can talk to about being Spider-Man, where he mm-hmm. can talk to his parents about kind of the other side of his life. And mm-hmm. I think to me, that shows is that it's okay to have multiple sources of support, right? That that one person doesn't have to hold all of that for us and we don't have to hold all of it. But that Miles gets to have his dad, his mom, he has his roommate at school that mm-hmm. he kind of talks to. And then he does have Spider Gwen, right? And some of the other spider people that he can talk to occasionally, right? So like mm-hmm. he has this whole support network that I think this movie shows us that he uses it. But And with that aspect of that support network, the biggest one, though, is, and coming back to what I was saying about that they're listening, is that there is a lot of, especially for parents that are tuned in with their kids, they're also that urge that they need to fix. Mm. And yeah. they need to be active in trying to fix the situation as opposed to while listening is a passive thing, it is still doing something. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And that nature of we also can do things by listening. Mm. And how sometimes I think it can be difficult to just listen because you want to stop the person from feeling those negative things or going mm-hmm. through all that hardship. But then at the same time, acknowledging that when we just listen, that actually does help people to feel better. They still have to go through whatever it is, right? Mm-hmm. Or they still manage it, but they have someone there that's listening to them, unfiltered, non-judgmental. that's just allowing them to try to make sense of it, right? And I think that's something that outside of this film, I hope that it starts those discussions on what would it look like if I did listen. Um, There's a lesson plan that actually goes along with this film. Um, So if you go to the the YouTube channel, I'm sure you'll have the links uh, to everything with this. The YouTube channel has the links to the the lesson plan and the lesson plan goes into some of that stuff. It goes into like looking at questions, right? Like how can we pay attention to, you know, what, Miles is dealing with. Um, how can we pay attention to just listening, right? What does that look like? Um, I think one of the pieces, if I remember, and, and I can look at it right now, where it says, mm-hmm. while you were watching the film, did it remind you of a time when you were feeling like this, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think in these moments, it teaches people that while you might want to make it right or make it feel better for the person, like you said, there's so much depth of just listening and allowing that person just to speak unfiltered without having to explain themselves. They're just speaking that I think allows people to get to a space where they still have to deal with the issue, but they feel more equipped to deal with it or they feel less intense about it in some spaces. And I think that's what I hope a film like this will start the discussion on. Is it okay for people to feel anxious? Yes. Is it okay for me just to listen as they talk about their anxiety? Yes. Is it okay if I don't know what to do once I've heard them talk about that? Yes. All of those things are okay. Just to be present for people, I think, is what I hope we can kind of gather from something like this. Mm-hmm. Very much so. 
And the most aspect of being is that we can solve a lot more things through a relationship than we can through isolation. Mm. Yeah, which I think was revealed or, or modeled very beautifully where at the end of the film, he comes out and says, hey, dad, do you have a minute? All right, can we just mm. talk? And I think he knows that even though his dad sometimes is a little overzealous and sometimes mm. always wants to hang, always wants to do it, even embedded in that, he knows that okay, this person does want to talk mm-hmm. to me. This person is interested in knowing how I'm doing, mm-hmm. right? Not to mention there is also psychological slash physiological benefits by the fact that they're having this conversation also while walking. Yeah, As I love opposed that. to just like, sitting still. And yeah. I mean, that's not one that most people are interested in. Not every opportunity has comes up, especially if we want to look at the aspect of ableism and so forth. But there are also biological processes that come with the aspect of movement then this is where movement therapies are also sometimes very effective but even with what we do even in brain spotting it's about getting a movement in the system as opposed to being static in the system yeah yeah and i love that you make that delineation because yeah when we talk about move it often has these ableist kind of connotations to it but i agree i think there's sometimes this movement in the system and i want to bring it back to the movie, there was mm-hmm. a movie, right? In that system where he went from, I'll just deal with it myself to realizing that it's too much and I need help. And so in a sense of he moved through his system just by asking his dad, do you have a minute, mm-hmm. right? And so from them from that to doing something more physical, I think is something that we definitely need to pay attention to that sometimes movement in the system is just asking for help. That's the first step, just saying, hey, I do need some help. That's a movement mm-hmm. from going to, I'm going to sit in my room and deal with it by myself to coming out of his room and saying, no, I'm going to ask my dad if he has a couple of minutes to let me talk to him. Mm-hmm. Very much so. Well, is there any other thoughts you want to get into? Otherwise, we can call this a wrap for this yeah. this visit to the Spider-Verse and the hero within. Yeah, I guess the last thing I'll say is, as you watch this, I encourage you to watch it multiple times and to give yourself moments just to digest and to give yourself moments to feel seen if you've ever experienced things like this before. Because mm-hmm. not just heroes go through it. Yep. Yep. And I'll say this. I know you said at the top of all of your uh, podcasts, but if you need support, reach out. I hope that this video shows you that you can just reach out for support, right? You can actually call up to a therapist and say, hey, do you have a minute? And they will put you on your on their slot, right? So you can do that, right? And so I encourage you to kind of maybe model after miles that if you've been sitting in your metaphorical room kind of trying to manage it all on yourself that you think about is there someone who might give me a minute to chat and then taking that step forward to ask and and even reach out if you can Mm -hmm. and while there is also the aspect of there's way more people than there are therapists keep Mm -hmm. trying sometimes we have to wait list yeah I agree I agree but you know, so long as you keep trying forward, you're making movement and you will eventually get in there. Yes, I agree with that 100 percent, 100 percent. All righty. Well, I want to thank you again for a lovely th- there blurting out. And yes. uh, we'll be back for more, because especially once we finally get the third movie on this, which yeah. was delayed because of the writer's strike. But hey, we'll get that sooner or later. We'll get yeah. there. All right. Hello. I'm Perry. So this has been Dr. Mercedes Samudio. I'm Perry Clark, licensed marriage and family therapist here on Untying Knots, Minds and Souls and Tethered. So we'll be back for more. Stay tuned. Thank you for tuning in for Untying Knots, Minds and Souls Untethered. Be sure to join your host, Perry Clark, for another episode on the podcast coming soon on the Voice America Empowerment Channel. 